like when when you had the big fight the other week? What mm. was it? What was the whole build up from when you woke up to when you had the fight? Mate, I literally stayed in bed the whole day. <laughs> stayed in bed. I don't get nervous for a fight, do I? Yeah. So I, I stayed in bed. I relaxed. I watched. Um, what did I watch? I watched something to motivate me. Um, Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. Yeah, that motivates nice. me for some reason. I don't know why. Because uh, yeah, he had the life. He had the the other life of all the birds and stuff like that. It, it, it looked good. Yeah. So um, no, nah, I, wa- I watched that for the whole time. I was I was told to be at the venue for six. Mm. Bearing in mind, I didn't know what time I was going to be on either, so um, I, I ended up boxing at 11. Yeah, yeah 11 o'clock. So but, do, you, um, do you do like any stretches or anything like that throughout the day? Do you do, yeah. what do you do? Stretch all, throughout the whole day. Like, I always get up every so often if I'm feeling a bit like a bit of an ache. Yeah. Get up, stretch that. I have, um, always have, a, I have a few hot baths, like a few really hot baths just to get me all relaxed, all smooth. Epsom salts, I don't know, do you know what you're done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst person to It just relaxes all your muscles. Like, it's, it's proper nice to get in the bath with. So I, I use that. Like, I was actually going to say... No. <laughs> <laughs> so close to saying... Yeah. Try it. Yeah, I know what it is. What is it? 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 happened to me a few times. But no, I, I, just, I just relax for the old day. I don't like to... Um, some people like get up, go for walks. So I, went, I think I went shopping. Did you? Yeah, I had to go get some, you know them tight night bombs? Oh I, yeah. I had to go get a pair of them. Yeah. Mate, I think the key is for you to stay relaxed, isn't it? Literally. Exactly, you don't want to burn any energy. No, that that's the thing. Especially like fighting so late as well. You know, How many times do you eat? Do you have to like, you can eat what? But I can what's, eat what? what's the whole situation with like, from the waiting to when you, when you literally arrive there? Like, what, what's, what's the eating thing? I don't, mm. You try to get as much fluid in you as possible. Um, you try to get as much carbs in you as possible. Like I woke up, I had a massive. I think I had two bowls of porridge. <laughs> two bowls of porridge. I had um, you know, electrolytes. I had loads of them. I, I think I had uh, eight liters of electrolytes. Yeah. Eight liters. Yeah, non-stop drinking, just sipping, trying to get all my energy up. Okay, what's wow. electrolytes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Lucas. You put all that the good salt back into your body yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah. where do you get that from? Uh, SAS. They're called Science and Sport. Okay. Yeah, just put it in water. Yeah, just put it oh, in water. Okay, yeah, nice, yeah. A bit of lemon and lime with that, a bit of flavour. So you didn't eat from 6 till 11 then? No, I ate. I made them go to um, an Italian restaurant around the corner. It was, it was good as well, my proper Italian like, pasta. Okay. And then they got me a coffee as well. Now, I, but I was sitting in the change room for the whole time. Did not come out of the change room 6 to 11? Yeah, 6 to 11. Didn't come out of the change room What did you once. do? <clears throat> sitting there on my phone. Yeah. Serious. Sitting there on my phone doing nothing. I was so bored. Really? So was you... So you had the wraps on? Uh, didn't have wraps on until about... I was told I was going to be on after nine, so I put the wraps on about nine-ish. Right. But then I didn't know it was going to be another two hours. Two hours. It was long. I've never been like that before. I've, I've, that's the, board of, the most bored I've ever been. It takes a lot of mental toughness and yeah. like just to stay patient and stuff in to know I'm going out there to actually like, have a fight yeah just don't like, and I have to wait here for another for like five hours it, it was killing me but yeah. I knew I knew that people were watching me people come and pay like like their hard earned money to come and watch me like yeah. so I had to I had to perform so when you found out that you missed your slot like <coughs> were you, you weren't going to go on how was you feeling at that point I thought I went in a box I thought I went in a box on the show and that that, that scared me because like I said, people pay their hard earned money just to come watch me fight. Like, yeah. My people are not boxing fans. They like my, they like want to come watch me fight. They want to come see me succeed. Mm. So when when I heard about that, I thought, oh mate, they haven't just come for the boxing. You weren't thinking about you. He's thinking no, about them. I, I, I don't care. Yeah. It's about me. I, it's, yeah. it's normal. Like, I've been boxing for thirteen years, so no, I, I do care about my fans quite a lot. When did you find out you was actually fighting? Uh, literally, when did I find out? I found out. About ten minutes before I had to go on. What? Yeah, ten minutes. They said. Oh, so what happened? What, what What was the point? From <laughs> when they said to fighting, how did you feel? And then I was sitting in the change room, with my wraps on, no gloves on, not not warmed up, nothing, because I didn't feel I was in the box. <coughs> yeah. And they come in, and was like, "Ah, oh, if this fight goes the distance, you're not boxing." So I was sitting there thinking, "He's probably going to go the distance." I heard he had a tough opponent. Then he ran back in about a minute after, saying, "The fight's been stopped. Get ready." <laughs> so I had to like try warm up as fast as I can, put my gloves on as fast as I can. And pop, get my mind right. Like, yeah, that's it, it was hard. That must that's have been so hard. difficult. You've gone from thinking you're not gonna, to 
Ten all of a sudden being told you walking out in ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. So the other guy probably didn't give a fuck. I know he don't care. He, this is his, this that's his life. That's all he does. Yeah. Literally. Like me, I was. I, was, I don't know. I think I think yeah. I don't know why about it though. Like, cause I went out there and performed as well as I could. How many people were there? Eight thousand. Eight thousand people there. What people was scary. Yeah. yeah. And, and you was the fight. The before. fight before the main event. Yeah. I, I walked out there and people were shouting, "Kill him!" People were shouting, "Make sure you knock him out." Yeah, it was, it was so crazy. then, what are you thinking? I was, I was walking out and I had a good tune to come out to. I had um, a biggie, a biggie small tune as yeah. well. Which I thought, uh, let me let me stand on the stage and wait for it to come on. And they messed up my tune as well, man. <laughs> messed up my tune. They played some dead tune. Swear. Yeah, mate. And I was I was I was there. I was thinking, oh, come on, man. Like, yeah. Fourth time it's happened in, a, in in my fight as well. They haven't they haven't played my tunes properly. So I walked out in some dead tune. I couldn't get up for this tune. And they must have been thinking, that's you. Yeah. yeah. Chose that. Yeah. And that's mate, that's what everyone said. I had people make me the C D as well. It's like, what happened to the tune? Oh. But I walked out and then I looked into the crowd and I see everyone, I thought, yeah, I'm ready. Don't yeah, game time, that's exactly it. You getting like ready like that in five minutes. Just like my mind's stuck in instinct, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Go in there thinking I'm gonna have a fight. Yeah. Gonna win a fight no matter what. I've never I've never ever thought me losing. Never had that mindset. Never will have that mindset. Cause I, I've read that. Um, you know the book The Secret. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've read that, and that's that's played in my mind. My teammate Ryan Bennett, he's big on that. Like he tells me all the time, like don't say certain things. Like in the gym, I think the other day he went to me, um, we were sparring, and I, I said to him, oh, my back's killing me. He was like, don't say that. Your back is fine. <laughs> I was like, yeah, all right, all right. But it's worked because he's a two he's a two time world champion now, so yeah. something's worked. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that like fighting with like sparring with someone like that, how does it how does it make you feel motivation wise? Confident, confident because he's got he's basically set for life now. Mm. And if we're having great spars, having fifty fifty spars, that means that I ain't far off mm-hmm. from doing what he's doing. But he's a two time world champion. Two time world champion, yeah. <laughs> Regardless, I know he's lucky. That's mate. fucking crazy. He just bought himself a house. He's he's done well, mate. He's proud. Like, I'm very proud of him. Yeah. Cause I've been with him two years now. No. About a year and a half, I been I was helping him out for a sparring at first, and um, he was always like doing a lot better than me in sparring. I was thinking, why is he doing better than me? Like, I know I'm better than this, and I just and it come to my mind, it must be his trainer, Adam Booth. And if you know who Adam Booth is, everyone class him as probably Britain's best um, trainer. Yeah. So, <laughs> mate, honestly, he's unbelievable. Like, I've never seen a trainer like it, and he's just so technical. So, so what makes what makes a good a good trainer? Backed up an eye. Well, firstly, he's he's had uh, he was with David Hay when David Hay was in his prime, smashing every single person. So he's been at world level, so he knows what it. to do. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But um, he's just every, his attention to detail is unbelievable. Like everything has to be perfect. Your feet have to be in a certain in a certain place at all times. Like you can't ever bring feet together. You can't ever your shoulders always have to be loose, but you always have to have tense fists. Like it's it's mad the way that does, does it. It's crazy. He's got like four different jabs. Yeah, some people just throw a random jab every so often. He's got four different ones that you have to do every spa, otherwise you ain't doing something right. We always say how important is like surrounding yourself with the right people. And it exactly. sounds like you've got that as well. I was speaking to someone earlier and they said to me, um, I was speaking about tiles and I said to them, at least I know now when I'm older I can look back and say I did everything mm-hmm. as well as I could. I had the best trainer, the best training the best spine punch, the best everything that was possible for me to succeed. Mm-hmm. That's all I want. Mm-hmm. As long as you gave yourself the opportunity. Yeah, and I made sure because when I was spying mine, Adam wasn't my trainer or my manager. So I, I went to Adam, I made sure I got it, I got with him, I made sure he trained me, made sure everything was perfect. I, I travel 100 miles a day to make sure I get that sort of stuff. So, Jesus Christ, yeah. putting it in. Putting it in, exactly. What about you based? I'm based in Kent at the moment. East London. Where's I'm your... Sorry. Was your fighting cap? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's a trick, isn't it? Yeah, it's far. Was you sucking the shit this morning? Uh, no, I wasn't, you know. Was you I, I leave early enough to miss it, and then I leave early, for, early enough on the gym to miss it as well. Oh, so I'm very lucky. Yeah. yeah. That's I'm cool. very, very lucky. It's commitment, man. Yeah. 50 miles there, 50 miles back. It's, it's killer. Like it says, for the right, it's for the best. Exactly. Best you can get there, isn't and it? And then so. it's, it's nice because he had, um, Adam Booth had um, his house open. He built his own house, and it's unbelievable. Like, Once again, I said, yep, like I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's crazy, I've got a picture of it, it's unbelievable, but um, I took my boy, 
and he met all the champions, got all pictures with the champion, pictures with Adam Booth, like he, he got to see like all that like, world title oh, and stuff like that. So it's, it's, so I'm, it's I'm, I'm, my boy's got the best company possible. Yeah. Oh, What's your so sign for? Four. Four. Hudson four. What has he done like since since he's come about? What's he done for your like motivation and <sighs> and hunger and desire? It's it's scary, I, mate. Honestly, I just any time I think about doing something, I think will it benefit him? Cause I I, don't, I couldn't care less about myself anymore. My life is Hudson. That's all I care about is making sure that any bit of money I get is Hudson's money. It's not my money. Yeah. I don't I don't buy myself nice things. I, I buy myself a pair of night clothes every so often. But he's always got everything that he can have asked for. Yeah. But he's he's a great kid. He don't he ain't naughty. He don't swear. He won't he won't. He, well, he fights, but he fight me. I'm yeah, the only person yeah. allowed to fight. Nah, my life is Hudson. That's how I put it. It's a complete kind of mindset shift when you've got someone depends on you like that, isn't it? That's exactly it. Um, my mind. Every, even when I'm in the house now, and he, he's older, so I, it's it's eased up a bit because I know he ain't, he ain't that naughty. But like, you always wonder where's my son. What's he doing? Mm. Could he hurt himself? Like, it's, it's always on your mind no matter what. Yeah. So it does drain you having a kid. Yeah. And I had him when I won the senior ABA title as an amateur. I literally just had him. So no sleep, no nothing. Won the ABAs, which is the biggest title in the amateurs. Oh. And, um, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm winding myself up. Because you're like, I'm like, yeah, yeah I know. We're looking good. I decided going. what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so you. Bloody hell. So you went straight from having him and then straight to the fight, won that. Won that. Um boxed for England twice, Germany and Ireland. And then turned professional. Had trials for Great Britain, didn't get on. Lost to someone who went to the Olympics. lost by a split decision as well, so very, very close. And then uh he went to the Olympics, I turned professional. What do you what do you owe? Olympics then professional because Olympians they get they well looked after. Very well looked after. Mm. So you've almost had to go through a lot harder path than Much many harder. of them. Yeah. They go Olympic. They go Olympics. Such a platform, isn't it? Oh, they get sponsors mm. all that. They get fights put on a plate. They get fights every month. Yeah. yeah. But it's weird. My my teammate Josh Kelly. Um. Obviously, you know of him. Everyone knows of him. now. He's unbelievable, and he deserves everything that he's got because, mm. as an amateur, he he. He's always winning titles. He's dedicating his life to it, so he deserves everything. But as an Olympian, I think you should not have a harder route, but you should be boxing a lot better calibre. And that's what he's doing. He's the only Olympian doing it. Yeah, he's, I'll, I'll he's, he's boxing all winning, winning records. Everyone he boxed has won a lot yeah. compared to him. Yeah. So he's done. He's done well for himself. Yeah, you know, he's under. He's under her, isn't he? Yeah, he's under uh, under her, but he's trained by my trainer Adam Booth. Right. So he's a teammate. That's bloody good. Yeah. yeah. You've got the team. <laughs> yeah. what, so, but you've got Charlie. You've got Charlie in your team. Charlie well. Edwards. Yeah, British champion. His brother. No, I ain't got Sonny. Sonny trains in Sheffield. But his his brother always comes down and helps out with spine and things like that. Yeah. And he's an unbelievable fighter as well. So um, yeah, there's three of you. There's me, Charlie, Josh, Ryan. We've got Harlem Eubank. Yeah. Good fire, very good fire. Yeah. Andy Lee, former world champion. But he's um he's lucky enough now because he's such a big name he can box once or twice a year, so he doesn't have to be in the gym twenty four seven. But yeah, that's our thing. So what's your like, what's your like thought processes when it comes to like motivation? Is it like as you said you spoke about Hudson? Is it like do you wanna do you wanna make sure he's sorted for life literally, or what is the ambitions around that? The ambition is to just have an easy life for him because I've always I've never I've never had a hard life where I've never got what I wanted but I've always had to work for it I've always had to like be good in school 24-7 yeah. I want him to be like I don't want him to have to like, um, I'd had, I don't want to go work today I haven't got any pocket money I'll say something I, I always want to be able to provide for him make yeah. sure he has a good life just a fun life like always do things for him nice holidays like getting, I've got my little motorbike now. Like, I just oh, do fun God. things. Yeah. That's that's what I want to do. That's how I want him to be. So since you've had him, is it been a massive step up to what it was before then? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before before I had Hudson, it was all about me. Everything was I, I want to go on holiday. I want to do this. I want to do that. Yeah. Now it's I want to take Hudson on holiday. I want to take Hudson places. That's unreal, man. It's, it's scary. When wait, honestly, when you have a kid, I remember, it, I remember seeing him be born and. 
I, I think I, for some reason my heart just went like it was the biggest like gust of wind in my in my chest. I was like, oh my god! And my, I just burst out into tears. Like oh, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like proper crying. Yeah. And I I never cry. I've never ever cry about anything apart from Hudson. Yeah. What's it like like being under the spotlight and such in the boxing world? Um, I try to take myself away from that. Like my last fight, I didn't get interviewed because I I'm I like to please people. So as soon as I box, I ran to the change room, got had a shower, mm-hmm. and then ran back and see all my everyone that come to watch me fight. So I missed the interview. I missed I missed a lot of like publicity and stuff like that. But I got to see everyone that come to pay those tickets to see yeah, the fight. Yeah, so of they kind of they they help me get the fight. So that's what I kind of want to do. Yeah. So how did you get to such a, a level? Where did it start? What training wise? Uh, Where did the boxing, the whole boxing thing come about? Boxing journey, right. yeah. My brother hates me saying this, but he got into a fight. For some reason, I always say he got he got beaten up, but he didn't. He never got beaten up. But um, he wasn't throwing any shots back. And he was only young. I was eleven, and he was thirteen. And my dad come out, and my dad says, "Sure, you both need to learn how to fight." Because we lived in Hackney, and Hackney back then was a rough area. So I went Repton, which is probably one of the biggest amateur clubs going. Um, did six years there, two junior ABA finals, boxed unbelievable fighters there, then moved to West Ham, senior ABA champion, NABC finals, senior ABA finals, England, boxed for England twice, uh, trialled for Great Britain for the Olympic team, and then turned professional. So it's, it's, and that's, that's all within 13 years, so I've, I've got it for 13 years. So when did you know that you was, you was good? Never. I don't. I don't think I'm. I don't. I don't think I'm anywhere where I can get to. Cause I know. I know how good I can be. Mm. But it's just. It's just hard work, dedication. Just keep. Keep going as much as possible. Yeah. Always training. So from when you started, was it like, this is what I want to do, or was it just like I just want to get good at fighting? If it does come about. I start. I started boxing because I was playing for. Fo- I was playing football for Hackney District. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to get fit. I just really wanted to get fit for football and uh, for some reason boxing started taking over and I started liking boxing more I like, started liking you get, you, when you're a boxer you, after a while you get, like, don't mind getting hit in the face it's, it's weird yeah but you don't mind hurting people so that's so you like, stumbled across it a little bit exactly I mean, that yeah going to find it so yeah, I, I think I, I'm happy my dad taught me boxing I'm happy my dad made me carry on boxing because yeah. I was going to give up at one stage because I was I was young. I think I was I just turned eighteen. I was training all year and I didn't do I didn't go out. I didn't do anything. Didn't socialize with friends. I was just like you know what I'd rather go out, like have a good time. And what stage was you hit eighteen? What stage was I? At? I was at. I just got to the senior ABA finals, and then and lost. you wanted to give up. I wanted to give up. Yeah. So no, was you at that level thinking I want to turn pro, or was you at that level just like I'm decent here. I love a fight, and I'm just here. Yeah, exactly that. Like I was there. No, I've never, I've never really wanted to turn pro. I never wanted to turn pro for some reason. I always wanted to be on the Olympic team because that's your Olympian. It's nothing yeah. better to be an Olympian for for most sports. So that was your dream from when? Since I turned, since I um, become a boxer, amateur. Yeah, I was young. I know a lot of boxers. I started like four or five. Yeah. Uh, but they they fade away. Most most fighters give up mm. when they're about seventeen because women nights out, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. beer, stuff like that, but my dad didn't let me, my dad was strict, very strict man, and he made me, and made me carry on, and now I'm a professional. When did you want to, see, what was the switch though, the switch from when you were saying like, from when, you know what, I'm good at this, I've won enough, like, I want this to be like my career. The switch was when I didn't get onto the GB team, because I lost to them. Um, the fight I went to the Olympics on a split decision. Yeah. That's the switch, and then I thought, you know what? Why don't I just make this a, a like a job? Like it's my job. Yeah. Like I'm I'm a good fighter, and I can fight. Just put everything on, put everything at it, and see what see what happens. So if you won a boxer, what would you be? Um, something that I'd probably be like personal trainer because I've always been sporty. No matter what, always played football, always done boxing, but probably like personal trainer, something like. That. Yeah. What's the biggest struggle in boxing? Selling tickets. In professional boxing, selling tickets. And dieting as well. 
But not more so than the ticket because. Bloody hell, I thought you said dying. I was <laughs> dying. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. It's possible. No, oh, dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Is that ever at the back of your mind? What dying? No, yeah. no. I don't get hit enough to, to like get hurt. I come away with less than a black eye. I, I have nothing. Mm. It's always yeah. And you never get nervous. No, not really. I get nervous too. The only the only time I get nervous is because I want people to like look at me fight and think yeah, you're a good fighter. I yeah. don't get nervous to fight because I've been doing it for 13 years. No, yeah. But yeah, I get nervous to like, I want I want to impress people. I want to impress my son. I want to impress everyone that comes to watch, my mum, my dad. Yeah. So that's that's why I get nervous. Yeah. But not because I'm fighting, I don't mind getting punched. No, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? After 13 years. Exactly. <laughs> I've got skin like liver. <laughs> Does Hudson come watch him? Not at the moment, not yet. When I win a belt, I'll make him come watch. But right now, it's. it's, it's it's it, it's not distracting that he's there, but it's like it's just everyone has to look after him. Thing like that. And he's he's a very active kid. Oh right. Okay. So until when I win a belt, that's when I want to get him in the ring, put put the oh, belt on okay. him, get pictures of him like that. Yeah. That'd be nice. What, what are your thoughts on him boxing? Pardon? What are your thoughts on him boxing? He ain't boxing. No. He's not boxing one bit. Never. Why? Oh, no, it's hard. It's a hard hard game. Yeah. Losing weight. I don't want to see my kid have to lose. My mum. My mum used to hate it. She when they used to lose like four kilo in a week. Like, bear in mind, I was like 13 and you have to lose weight, like, it's not right. Mm, and I don't yeah. want to see that on my boy. Yeah. My boy, is, he's, a, he's my pride and joy. I never want to see him have to look skinny or lose weight. I think that people don't see, like, the behind the scenes, like, the struggles of boxers, do they? Like, the whole thing about cutting weight and putting on weight and... Mm, no, one, no one sees it. No, no, no one knows what it's like. It's, it's hard. Boxing's a hard game because you've got all the struggles of cutting weight. I remember I was, I think I was cutting, I cut a stun. On the f- and on the Friday I was weighing him and literally all I wanted to do was eat and drink but I had to go do like four ticket drop offs and it was all in that like, mad location so it was like I was like driving trying to drink as much as I can trying to eat as much as I can oh mate it was, it was a struggle that day yeah so you do it all? I do everything literally every, everything as in manage social media so I manage sponsors literally I do everything at the moment you want business in it? exactly literally but it's good that I'm doing it now, so when, hopefully when I do get big enough and I can hire someone to do it, I can tell them exactly what I want you to write and stuff like that, instead of just, oh, right away, do you want it? They ain't got a clue. You can yeah, see yeah, impulse. Yeah, exactly, that works. exactly that. Mm-hmm. So what is it, you, you have to like, you don't, you, you, you don't drink a lot, like, what, what is, what's no, the whole, it's, what's it's, the whole thing? It's, it's different now. now. Now that I'm with like, this trainer that I'm with, he's very smart in the way he does it and does it all perfectly. But um, nah, a lot of fighters they'll do like they'll like cut down the weight slowly and things and stuff like that for like the whole training camp. Yeah. And bearing in mind that leaves you just drained for the whole training camp. Our thing is now we lose weight as fast as possible in the last week. So then when you do drink, it goes straight back on you. Instead of losing it slowly and then it goes back on you slowly. Yeah. It's it's there's a lot of science behind it, but the way yeah. Adam's done it is smart because my last fight felt massive. Serious. I felt huge. You did look in unbelievable shape. Easily the best shape I've been in. It must be really satisfying. It's it's nice to know that how fit I am. It's nice it's nice mm. to know that I can do certain things that a lot of people can't do. A lot of people can't punch for three minutes just dead straight. It's it's hard work. I remember yeah. being on the patch just in the gym like before for twenty seconds. Yeah, it kills you. Don't just... miss me. <laughs> oh my days! Listen, I was in the gym the other week. I was like, oh my days! I need to lose some steam. <laughs> Honestly. Didn't warm up nothing, I said, but it's the gloves, right? <laughs> Smashing the bag, right? Obviously not punching it, right? My body was like... The next day? The next day, yeah. the next day, yeah my, all my joints, my mm. arms, my, everything was just like... How do, like obviously, you don't feel it now. No, not at all. Well, I, like, do, I do feel it when we when the training gets more intense. Like, training gets really hard. Like, today I've done 15 rounds. Wow. And that, yeah, that involved, like, a minute bag, a minute, like, leg circuits. Like, you know them big, massive mats? Yeah. Like, if you like, sprint on them for a minute. No, I don't like, know what the big massive mats are. Like. You thought one did. <laughs> yeah, no, you, know, you know those huge, like, crash mats? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, and, they, and they sink right in, didn't they? Mm. They're like, and, like, sprint on so them. So, like, water, like, sand or, like... Basically, exactly, like, yeah, like yeah, it just takes it out. All that you need. set up, then. Mate, we've got unbelievable, so we've got everything there that we need. But, yeah, we just do some crazy stuff, man, here, and it, it's working, because my legs are a lot stronger than before. Mm. Serious. Mm. Do you do much weights? Never. Don't do weights. I mean, I do want to get myself strength. a strength trainer, but a lot of them, like, I've had a few contact me about it, but a lot of them are like, 
his little way, and that's way too far for me to come. Mm, Especially yeah. like I'm driving all the way to Surrey, then to drive all the way back and then drive all the way there, so mm. it's a lot of mileage. Yeah. So hopefully try to find one around Surrey one. Yeah. I think people want to take into account as well when trainers, they're getting hit back. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like when you first kind of took a hit? I remember I cried. Yeah, I cried. Did you? Yeah. What happened? A fellow called Danny, he hit me. But bear in mind, he was, he was unbelievable. And he was like the next best thing. And he hit me. And I thought, oh my God. Like, I jumped out of the ring. I started crying to my dad. And my dad's a strict man. He said, go get back in the How ring. How old was you? I think I was 11. Yeah, it was when I just about started. But then I got my payback because I think I was 13. And this is when I started realising I was a good fire. And I, I stopped him in the ring. I beat him up. And he just didn't want to fire. So I thought, yeah. Yeah, that's payback. Yeah, going yeah, yeah. back for me. Copies down the line. Yeah. <laughs> so was it like, because they weren't like, I heard like quite a few people say like, you're right, throwing punches at the bag, mm -hmm. and throwing punches at the exactly. pads. But like, when you've got someone coming at you, it's yeah. a different, different When, when someone's moving and like slipping mm -hmm. your shots and making you tired, that that's when it's different, but. Is it scary? No. I don't mind, I don't mind getting hit, but I'm so used to getting hit that. But. It's like it's scary when you spot like someone like Ryan or someone like that because he can he can punch and he can knock out clean like flat out easily. Yeah. So you have to be very wary of him. But no, some fighters like like my last fight, he hit me and I thought, all right, let me just walk straight through you because you can't hurt me at all. Yeah. But yeah. that's a bad thing because then I start dropping my hands. I start just getting hit with stupid shots that I shouldn't have been hit with. But I'm still trying to learn game the experience. So why would you drop your hands like? Just because you don't really need to level them up. Yeah, it's yeah, like, you don't need it. And it's entertaining. It's the entertainment yeah. business, isn't it? Like, mm -hmm. You need to entertain the fans for them to want to come and watch and buy more tickets. Mm -hmm. So that's what you got to do. So are you in between, like, are you definitely, you want to be like a showman or do you want to go in there, do your job and then walk up, walk up? Is, is, it, is, it is it difficult yeah. finding that balance then? Yeah, it is. It has to be both, no matter what. Like, like t take a Harold Davis. Like, I've known him many, many years and he's, he goes in there and does the business. But yeah. outside of the ring, he's a showman. He, he, every, everyone, not hates him, but ever, everyone dislikes him at the moment because. But look what he's doing for boxing. He's mm -hmm. getting the best fights he can. He's making the money, like really, really good money. He's making. Yeah, he's so doing well. He's doing very well. Yeah. That'd be the hardest thing though, like deciding what to do. Do you not like that's? Do you not like want to play it safe sometimes? Don't have to. No, don't, don't really have to. No, nobody really bothers you like that. Not, not yet, no. Until I'm like at a really high level, I can do what I want to do because I know the people I'm sparring are at that level I'm, and I can do nearly what I want to do then. So why, how, what's been the struggle the last year? Been struggling to get fights? Yeah, struggling to get fights. A lot of, um, a lot of UK fighters didn't want to fight me as, as much. Um, unless you're at a high level, but I'm not at that level yet. I'm st I've, I've still only had seven fights. Mm. Unless, I'm fi unless I'm fighting someone who's had like 30 fights, which is a stupid thing because they've got the experience. Mm -hmm. So I, I weren't at that uh, level yet, but now, now I know what I'm capable of. Mm. Capable of. Like, I know what I can do, I know how hard I can train, I know how hard I can fight. I know I'll be able to take a lot of people out. Yeah. Mm. How hard is it to stay patient? Like, I think to. Constantly work and work and work and knowing that it's for the long game. Do you find that hard? Or? Like, it killed me. It killed me knowing that I weren't fighting because I, mean, I, I, I want my little boy to watch me fight. Regardless of money, like fighting for money, obviously, it's my full time job. I want him to see me fight and like me to like show him videos and stuff like that all on YouTube interviews because he loves watching, he watches it on his iPad. And when he's like asking, Daddy, are you fighting? When you fight, it's like, yeah, soon, Hudson. Yeah, soon. And I know better than mine didn't have a fight in day at all for a whole 11 months. So it, it, that, that was hard. But. Must have hurt. Yeah, it did hurt. It did hurt. I thought no one cared about me. Yeah. I think it's only up until this last fight that, I had, that everyone started to realise what I'm about and how mm -hmm. good I actually am. So how do you get through that though? You know, I mean, you're like 11 months. Every day you wake up and you're thinking, fucking hell, maybe this week, maybe this week, maybe yeah. this week, and then nothing comes about. Well, there's a big fight. Maybe I'll be on that card. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, no, no, I actually remember going to the gym and bearing in mind I didn't have a fight. And my car broke down. My car, it was my first ever car. And um, it like, I started, I started crying because like, I had no, no income coming in because I weren't fighting. I had nothing, literally nothing to my name. I thought, just, well, how, am I, how am I meant to live? Like, I, I was going to give up boxing there and then because I didn't have anything. And my car was broken. I couldn't get to the gym anymore. Um, 
and I just burst out into tears. I called up my mate. I was crying on the phone to him. It sounds stupid now, but it was, it was hard back then, though. Like, now, it's, now it's good. But back then, it used to kill me. Oh. Mm. Yeah, knowing that you're not getting paid. And you don't know when it's going to be. And I still had loads of direct debits coming out, no matter what, like my car, petrol. Petrol, I was doing, I'm doing minimum £10 a day. So if I'm doing a two month training camp, it's like £800. Yeah. Just for petrol, like, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it was costing a lot of money. It was costing more money than I was making, put it that way. Yeah. So it just weren't adding up. Like, this knuckle, if you look at, I can't really see it, but. That knuckle's broke. Bit broke. Flat. That, yeah, it's flat. All scarred up, hand of lights. I've got bad hands. Just the nature of it, though, isn't it? Exactly. 13 years of using yeah. my hands 24 7. Nature of it. So, what's it like when they lay stuff in that? Um, they, they can hurt. Like, the glove, the professional gloves we use are like cardboard, like, they're for the entertainment business, so you, they want you to hurt people. So, they're like, there's not much padding in them, yeah. Really? Yeah, it's crazy, man. So, do you get given gloves then? Yeah, we get given gloves and they get given the exact same gloves. So whatever gloves we use, we're getting punched in the face with as well. Okay. Yeah, so you, you kind of want to go for like half decent, like a bit padding, <laughs> like just pure cardboard. What do you use in the gym then? I use, I use the best of the best gloves. They're called winning gloves and they're, they're just perfect, best padding. Because like, you don't want to hurt your teammates, do you? You don't want to scar them, you don't want to cut them, you don't want to hurt your hands. In a fight, you've got, you're only fighting for that one time for a couple of rounds, so you don't mind. Yeah. But when you're sparring, you need to. When you're training, you need to have the best of the best gloves. So, what do you feel about sparring your mates? Normal. I get in there, try kill them, and then get out and be best mates again. Simple as that. That's incredible, isn't it? That's exactly what it is. Oh, fuck, this is a tactic. It's incredible. Yeah. Like all that time fighting, but. Yeah. Mate, like, do you I, not think sometimes, oh, I can really fucking do no, it? If, if I do that, I do it. I don't, I've never thought, oh, I might knock him out. I think, what? Oh, I'd knock him out then. Like, you got to try. Cause you, you're both learning at the same time. Like they're learning not to get hit, mm -hmm. and you're learning how to hurt someone, mm -hmm. and vice versa. It's, it's crazy. It's as well like that's they're gonna hit. Yeah. You. They're gonna hit you. Yeah, so exactly. Kill will be killed. Yeah. I remember I had a booth um, cause I'm I like to talk a lot in um in the gym, and he was saying when you're sparring like look at Ryan like the world champion, and he's like literally staring at himself in the mirror like psyching himself up getting ready for a fight, like for a proper fight because we are trying to in. in What's the word? Replicate. Replicate, yeah. The fight. So mm -hmm. you want to get yourself ready as much as possible, warm up as exactly the same as you would, mm -hmm. and go in there and do exactly what you would do in the ring. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't want any bad habits to happen, do you? Yeah, How different is it, though? From, so, training, sparring, mm -hmm. to when you get into the fight night room. How, how, how right different now, is it? Fighting is a lot easier than sparring. But I'm sure as soon as I start getting to that world level, that's when it all changes. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm sparring world champions, British champions, so who I'm fighting is nowhere near their level. Okay. But right. it will change. Your confidence must be crazy when you get in there. It is. Literally, you get in there, you know they ain't, you've, you've trained so hard for the mm -hmm. last two months, you've sparred so hard, you've done, you do over like two, two, three hundred rounds like in that one training camp with the yeah. best of the best. I was going to say, and the people that you've being with during that time, like exactly. you say, fighting the world champion and stuff. Exactly, so you just go in there with full of confidence and like nothing's going to touch up. What's it like knocking someone down? It's fun, man. Room. It's nice, because I remember once I ate this geezer and he went down and I looked straight at my corner, I looked straight at my fans and they was all going nuts and I, I shouted like a girl, man. I said, like, come on, man. <laughs> oh, I like, oh, like a girl, but I was, I was so excited, I couldn't, I couldn't help it. But yeah, no, it, it's fun. Everyone goes nuts when you do it. That must that's be the best way to Yeah, easy, yeah. Yeah, right. that's what yeah. you work for, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, of course. But you don't work to knock someone out, you work to win, but. Yeah. It's a fire for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you try <laughs> to knock them out. Mate, I'll be like. Come on! Mate, you can't help them out, honestly. And actually. you just go absolutely mad. That's like, overwhelming, wasn't it? Yeah, I was like a little girl, like, come on! Yeah. But no, it was good So you end the fight, because you ended it, I'm, I'm sure you ended it quite humbly the last fight you had. Yeah, no, yeah, you can, no, you ain't. If you what don't was it like, I can't really remember, was it, was it quite like? What one, the last one? Yeah, the last fight. The last one I didn't knock him out. It was tough, very tough. I remember I my biggest shot, my biggest right hand possible. And he looked at me, I went, no, like that. And he shook his head. I was like, oh, I was like, don't do that. No. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was a tough little, um, that was even Barcelona, I think. And they've got it rough in there, so. What was that, the Mexican? I don't know. 
on for his mouth. Looked it, his head. Like, he looked it, yeah, he looked tight. Yeah. He looked scary, mate. He had like all black bloodshot eyes. Oh. He looked like he's been, he can take a beating. Really? Yeah. Gotcha. What was it yeah. like when you, like, so the first time you seen him, when, when was the first time you knew you were fighting him? You actually like, see him? Three weeks beforehand, I knew I was fighting him. First time I seen him was at the weigh in. What was the difference between, like, seeing him on, 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 on videos and stuff to seeing him? Face to face. He, he was a lot taller in person when I seen him. I thought, I thought God, he's a, bit, he's a bit tall and he seemed, he seemed confident because I was just saying to him at the way. By the way, what the fuck is that? that? Fireworks, I'm sure. Let's go see. Come on, let's have it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about up. all this boxing. Face, <laughs> gun shots on. You, you found out you was fighting him yep. and then you see him for the first time, sit up in front of him. What was you thinking? Come on, knock you clean that. <laughs> Was you? Yeah, I thought, oh. Was you a little bit, was you a little bit fucking, oh, you were a bit tall, or was you just thinking, No, he was only a tiniest bit taller than me, but I thought he was going to be shorter than me. But um, I looked at him, I thought, oh, man, I hurt you. And I said something to him in his language, at the way in, and um, <laughs> as soon as I said it, he just went, yeah, all right. Like, what did you say? I said, pussy. <laughs> 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 I called him pussy in his language, at the way in. Just, just try to psych him, try to get in his head, see what he's about. Yeah. But he was confident, man. I didn't think he would be confident. Well, yeah, he fights. He fights often, doesn't he? Yeah, he fights. He gets a lot of money as well. He gets a lot of money for what he does. He's lucky. Like Fifteen hundred pound a week, mm -hmm. and he fights every week. Fighting every week. He's yeah. having a laugh. Yeah, Wait, that's sick. Especially from where he's from. From it, right here. That's unbelievable money still. Yeah, that's money back there. Yeah, he's yeah. Giving me yeah, back there. Yeah, basically, yeah, big literally, money, big ass. So that's the thing. Like he's like, he's big time. In his head, like where he's from, he's, big, he's the biggest of the biggest. Like where he's about. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So like, that's why his confidence, obviously, that. Like, yeah. Fucking the roof, man. Yeah, like, imagine being on that sort of money. It's good money a month. Yeah, really good money. good money. So, like, let's say if, for like the young athletes, um, or young aspiring athletes who want to make it to that elite level, like yeah. where are you right now? What's what's the what's the biggest advice that you'd give them? Just work, man. I I work so hard for the first couple of years as an amateur. I I, I didn't take the game too seriously because my brother was always a better fighter than me no matter what um so he, he was the boxer i was the footballer really your brother yeah, was? yeah he was a better fighter than me man both of them were my little brother and my bigger brother really? i wasn't never a naturally born fighter I'm, always, I'm just a nice guy yeah. I, my, my older brother he's spiteful like he, he loved a fight <sighs> but um until i think they both give up and my dad made me go because me and my dad are very close so he, i listened to my dad and um i just i just worked hard very very hard and things started changing. Like as soon as I started running, like I never used to run, never used to run, and then as soon as I started running, I started winning like tiles and things like that. So just work hard, work as hard as you can, and listen to your trainer because trainer always does best. Yeah. Who do you point you back to your success at the moment? Well, as an amateur. Like what? Like what do you put? What do you point it back at? Would you point it back at hard work? Would you put it in the mindset? What would you put nah, down to your mindset, training? I was only young. I didn't have a mindset back then. It was go fight and then go out. Um, it was training. It was it was it was working hard. Yeah. As soon as I started working hard, everything started happening. Yeah. Like I just wanted. I just wanted to win. Like I, I, I never really cared. I always won, but and when I wanted to win, that's when I started winning all the titles and things like that. Yeah. So it was, yeah, definitely train hard. How do you how do you have the balance though what? between fun and hard work? And that dedication, like, it must be tough, especially in boxing. Yeah, yeah, of course, like, with me, I'm, you know me, I'm always out. Yeah. But I'm only out if I know, well, firstly, if I'm not fighting, like, for a couple of months. Like, I'll stop going out after, like, I'll probably after this weekend, because yeah. I'm fighting in, in about eight weeks, so stop going out, going to training camp. But Where are you fighting? Uh, Brentwood, December the 16th. Looking forward to it? Oh, unbelievable, I can't, can't wait. wait. Yeah, just before Christmas, my little um, my little boy will be happy because he'll get whatever he wants. Love that. Yeah. So where can people buy tickets? Um, go through me, social media. Go for you. Go for me. I, I, we, as a boxer, you always have a certain amount of tickets you have to sell no matter what. Otherwise, you don't box. I know many boxers who couldn't hit that requirement, so they didn't box in that show. Bear in mind that you have a like eight week training camp, so all that eight weeks is for nothing. So it's hard. Like I do like eight hundred pounds in just petrol alone for mm -hmm. them two for them two months. It's just hard balancing it as well. So you got to have your end of the game training, and then also got to be focused on yeah, selling tickets. Selling tickets. As yeah, well. we get we get called up. 
I, I think I get called every two days, how many tickets sold? And it's like, it's like stress on your life. I think, come on, man, I'm, like, let me just get on with it instead of like being pressured. Fuck. Mm. But, but I had no idea it was mate, like that. Like, it's exactly what it's like. No, no, not many people do. Like, a lot of my fans do, so they're always coming, always buy tickets. I, I have people buying tickets even if they're not coming, just because they know what it's like. Oh, mate. Yeah, it's, it's hard work, man. Don't sell enough tickets, you don't fight. Simple it's still that. like that now. Not so much in there, but... You have to sell tickets still. I, I don't... My contract, I don't have to sell tickets, but... Love that. If you want to box all the time, you have to sell the tickets. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to be making them money. Yeah. So you basically put that on your thing? Yeah, I put, I put that on Facebook. I remember I, I tweeted something on Facebook, and it was... um, It was, a, it was literally... Uh, the headline was, if the, pump, if the promoter ain't paid, you ain't boxing. And it was all about ticket sales, and then everyone started reading that. Everyone started sharing it, so and it got massive. So now people know what it's about. Yeah. What all the money up there? That's what you need. Yeah. That's tough. I did not know no. the game was like no, that no, no, no. at all. Yeah. So when you got people, I got I got that. My father who he'll take sixty tickets, and he'll sell them all to his lot. Like, I mean, got people that do that. It's great. Like I've got some. Yeah, you've got like mates who like they'll take like ten for like all of their work, like, and make sure they sell them. Yeah. Like that, you need people like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've done it right. Yeah, that's the thing. I, 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 I see that as very entrepreneurial. Like it's your own business. Mm -hmm. mm. You've treated, you've done that well. I've done it all right. Obviously, there is people out there who's they have people selling tickets, but I have to still do all the drops. So I do a lot of miles. I do a lot of miles from just ticket sales. Loads of miles. Wow. Or like. Say if like, I'm selling tickets to someone like over like Instagram or Twitter, I will send them the tickets, but I will pay for the postage, and it always has to be like first class delivery, so they know it's mm -hmm. there and they've always got it recorded. So it's like, it's costing me money, like yeah, yeah. but they help they're coming and they they're helping support, so mm. yes, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard, man. Mm. The rewards will be huge, though. It will. It's the long game, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Long time. I'll make sure. I trained, I trained way too hard, like, I, I was in today by myself, like, I knew no one was going to be in, but I made sure I got, I went in, because I know I'm fighting soon, so, I am training as hard as I can. Are you ever, like, swayed, like, to go out, some, like, go out sometimes, to say, during camp sometimes, or is it just, like, no, you're so focused on that fight that you don't even want to go out? I'll go out, but I won't, firstly, I don't drink, and yeah. secondly, I don't go out for mad hours. Yeah. And plus, I, my, I, I don't have to get up until 11 o'clock. Yeah. So, like, so even if you're getting at, like, 2 o'clock, you still got all of the hours to make up. Like, I, I know it's not good, but I don't go out too off, like, regularly. But I still enjoy myself, because otherwise you just, just get bored of boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened before. I got bored, and I nearly give up when I was younger, so... You've got to maintain the enjoyment, Yeah, isn't exactly. You need yeah. to enjoy it. And not be funny, you need to go out and start seeing people. Cause I've, every time I go out, I have people, oh, you're that boxer, I look, I look. Let me know when you got tickets next. Uh, let me take your number and stuff like that. Mm. Like, people always ask me when I'm out like, for tickets and stuff like that for the boxing. So it is. It does help when you go out. Yeah. Okay. Who's your biggest in inspiration? Well, my dad. My dad. He helped me out a lot. Boxing wise, it would be Sugar Ray Leonard because he's just unbelievable. But in life, my dad, because he's he he met, well he made me stick at boxing. My mom, well, I'm, I'm my mum if I'm honest. My mum, my mum, strict mum, strict mum and dad, both from the Caribbean background. So yeah, strict. Yeah, they're both Caribbean. Yeah, my mum's half Antigua, my dad's half Jamaican. Shut up. Yeah, no one knows that. Oh. Yeah. That's crazy stuff. It's good stuff, isn't it? That's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's good that mix. is good stuff. <laughs> That's a good mix. It's, it's, it's a it's a mad mix. Yeah, it's good. Something to talk about, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little Hudson. He's got like. Got Jamaican, Antiguan, English. He's got Greek. Wow. He's got everything. Yeah, he's got the best mix. He's, he, mate, he's, he's got a good mix. Yeah. Is that a dog stick? Yeah. That, <laughs> I a that. that is a dog <laughs> chip. Oh, <my laughs> <God. laughs> I'm looking at think, Wait, why is he blowing it? <laughs> <laughs> I did not even. Mate, I threw with everything. What was I threw with in that? I can't remember. That is the weirdest one yet. Yeah, it's the weirdest. Oh, exactly. She's chewing it. Oh, shit. Oh, I know. He's thinking, what? Yeah, I was looking at it. I was thinking, that? wait, that's a dog chew because I've got two <laughs> little chihuahuas, haven't I? Have you? Like, <laughs> my mum has that. My mum's that. But yeah, I've got a little kitten now, man. A little Persian. Serious. Yeah, when you moved in, how did you feel? Oh, 
shit myself. I fucking got to pay bills, man. Mate, you don't realise how much it costs. I have to pay £135 council tax. <laughs> Bear in mind, it's not a casual house. But you have to pay for all the lights and stuff like that, I think. It's not even a council house. I pay £135 for council tax. Yeah, man. Madness. Life itself. Yeah, life it should be when you move out. Oh, yeah. What are you like at cooking? I'm bad. <laughs> yeah, are you? Good cook, man. I cook for shepherd's pie, though. Oh, serious? Yeah, you man. can cook? Yeah. Love that. Grandma. I got my, I'll get my dad to teach me a Caribbean food at the moment. Like, he, he does oh, all that like, fish and that. Like, oh, he does. What's your favourite food? Caribbean. Love that. Caribbean food, yeah. What do you have? Oxtail. Oxtail, I'll have yes. a stew chicken. No, I'll have everything. Curry goat, a lot. Yeah, good. All of it. Stew. I think my favourite is actually um, Akin Sawfish. I don't know why I love it. I love it. <laughs> but I like fish. I love fish. Yeah, I, love fish. I love fish. You don't like Akin Sawfish? I don't like Akin Sawfish. <sighs> no Trash. Not no true. So no fish. But it's nice, man. That's the fish. fish. Aki's not. Ah, so salt fishes. Aki's just, wait. Well, yeah, Aki's, Aki's that little yellow stuff. Isn't There's... It? Cream. No, mate. I love it, man. I remember once I had it in the dumpling, it. cut a dumpling in half, yeah. put the Aki in it, like, just close it up, eat it up. Oh, that was bad. Aki. No, mate. Aki's is trash. It's like <laughs> vegetable shit. Wait, it's, it's nice. Anything to do with a vegetable is not, not a bit of you anyway. Nope. Oh no wait, I, I, I pick apart, I take away the ackee, yeah. and I eat the saltfish. Dumplings are the best, like nah, fried dumplings. No I've got, I'm lucky I've got lion's pet man, because I can eat some crap. Yeah. No, what I like about my sponsors, I've got I've got like, four sponsors, and they're good because they give back. Lion's pet give back, I think it's every Sunday they um, do a uh, homeless run. Every time, really? every week. Oh, wow. um, Power Day, they basically sponsor the whole of the amateur gyms. In in uh, in boxing, um, box fit they help out a lot of fires, and I've got another one, Elite Karate, and he um he does little kids karate, and he's unbelievable. They they get an unbelievable belt. So I've got some good sponsors like proper sponsors. You know what I mean? What do they do for you? Karate? No, yeah, he's karate, but he does like money sponsorship. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Oh nice. Right. Like, he's great. So he helps he helps out with kids and stuff like that. I ain't, I ain't just got sponsors who literally just have nothing to do with anything apart from just sponsoring me. Yeah. I have sponsors that actually give back to people, mm -hmm. which I like. Oh, nice. It's, it's good. So you're very selective in who yeah, actually comes with Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. need to be. Yeah. Mm. That's unreal, though. Huh? Yeah, why would you... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... You can't comment. And he's actually playing with the math bit. Yeah, I know. Oh, genius. Oh, <laughs> I put up. I ain't smelling that, no it's way. Um, no, I don't know, it's a slightly off topic question, but I've just always thought of like, being like kind of the size that we are. How big is that Joshua in person? Oh, mate, he's unbelievable. He's six, well, he's six foot eight or something, that's even seven. But he just, just, you feel him, like, say if you're here and he's, he's behind you, you think, wait, he's so behind me, man. <laughs> you, he's that big, honestly, like. Boxing September 12th. This big man. The machine. Oh, who's me the machine? September 12th. Champion yeah. of the league. He's, he's, he's a lot bigger than people think. Yeah, because that's like. the thing. On like, TV, he looks massive, but he, he doesn't. But then he's normally with big, with big people as well, yeah. isn't he? Like, if you watch his last fight, the man was six foot one. Yeah, I think. how big he looks Made compared to Yaki, though. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's big, man. He slapped me on my leg once, didn't he? Yeah, I, I, we, was, we was sitting next to each other and I made him laugh. He went, ha ha. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> and my whole body went. Oh, oh, oh my god! Shit, he dead in my leg with a slap. Me. I felt to dig him. Oh, felt to dig him. <laughs> Imagine me hitting him. <laughs> How does he train? He trains hard. Oh, he's an unbelievable trainer. Do you hear, you hear him in the, like? Was he like hitting the bag? Like a bloody. I used this bag. It's called the mammoth. And this bag. What I mean? I've got a video of me hitting it, and I. I'm hitting it as hard as I can, it just goes ta 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 and it doesn't move. It hits it with one two, like boom boom, the bag flies. Really? He's so strong, like really? it's unbelievable, scary strong. Like, I'd love to see what that what it feels like to get punched by him, I don't know why. That like, is scary right. power. Yeah. Pop Different on. kind of power, isn't it? It's one you can't prepare for. So exactly, you can't, you can't prepare for that. that. Yeah, I was thinking that. His bag must be that. It's, mate, it's huge. It's, it's called a mammoth, it's like, it's easily the biggest bag in the USA. Massive. I mean, just don't move. No, I don't move for me. But I am, I am. He, he normally fights about 115 kilo, so I'm half his weight. Yeah, half his weight. How far do you think he'll throw us? <sighs> he can throw all three of us, like.
good in it. So what's he like in what's it like to have him have him like you know him? Yeah. He's like the biggest sports star mm. in it, like No what, he's he's a humble geezer and he's he's like a normal lad. Like we talk about like going out and stuff like that, like he still has a good time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, you're speaking about <laughs> going out. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> Fuck man. You, 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 you. Yeah, after Every party. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, my coach. Yeah, <laughs> come on, my coach. Come on, my arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go to like any club, yeah, the most prestige club. Yeah. Go to districts, be like, I want 100 girls right now. Whoever gets. He's starting start, well, he start young. He's, he's a lot older now. Nah. Yeah. But he's, I think it took him four years to get to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Then four years to become world champion. Okay. Yeah. So. Unbelievable. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. He's lucky. He's a very athletic geezer. His body's mm. unbelievable. He's got the sp- he's got speed. He's, yeah, got, powers. he's got everything. Yeah. He's, he's literally a specimen of like science. Like he's unbelievable. Yeah. And I've seen him on the bag, and he throws a fast punch, man. Really fast. Really fast. Really powerful. He does everything perfect. Well, I don't know. Yeah. What's next for you? For me, well, obviously not overlooking December, but I've been told I'm boxing for titles. I'm gonna box for a title early next year, so. Amazing. So no. I get to start getting some belts. Titles like what? W- w- I'm hoping I'm hoping two or three. Like obviously you have like five fights in a year. So I'm hoping like two or three of them are like a title fight. Mm-hmm. That's when like you start getting like proper recognition that you deserve. Yeah. Like you need, you need like T V slots, things like that, that's what you need. And when you've got titles you get everything you want. Mm. When do you reckon you'll be fighting next after December? <sighs> what, boxing December. Would you want? Would you, would you be ready for like? I'll February? fight. I'll fight January. I'll yeah. happily fight January. I'll fight. I'll fight every month. Like it's, I've been doing it all the time. I spar every. I spar every other day. Like and my spar is hard and fight. So not be funny. I could fight every every month. But yeah. yeah, yeah. I, realistically, I'd want to box every two to three months. But obviously, things happen. Mm-hmm. Next year will be the year, man. It will be the year. Huge, I mean, right, it's a huge, yeah. huge year next year for you. Yeah, 2018, that's when you start stepping everything up. Yeah. I work, I've worked hard this week, this year, and next year I'll work even harder. I'm looking forward to it, man. Nice one, man. Thanks for coming in, man. It's all right. My pleasure. Cheers, man. Good luck next year. Right, yeah. Cheers, bro. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah.